Good morning. Welcome to our update for Thursday, I'm sorry, for Tuesday, uh, April 28th. Talk about uh, Baldwin heroes and uh, Highlander heroes all the time, but today we're starting out at the high school and I wanted to show you uh, the work of some of our heroes. Uh, food service are here uh, for prepping for this morning. Um, we know that food distribution happens between uh, 11 and, and, and 1, but there's so much work that happens here in the building. And so. Uh, just to take a look at our cafeteria, and I hope I don't make everyone seasick, but I'm just thinking of the spaces um, as far as the preparation in the large cafeteria that the ladies that are busy packing the bags. And so literally by this afternoon, um, all those cases will be loaded up and they will be out into the buildings. And so uh, really some fantastic things that are happening. We're going to walk back over uh, to the ball one bean. It's a little dark in the hallway. So again, hope I don't make everyone seasick as I'm walking with you. Uh, but thank you as a shout out to the to the ladies today um, and, and every day where they're here, they're working hard, and they're making sure that our meals are uh, ready for the kids uh, come 11 o'clock. So I uh, really wanted to, to thank them and to show that operation here this morning. Uh, today, today we talked about the uh, coffee and conversation and, and the setting for today is our very own Baldwin Bean. So let me get plugged back in here. So the Baldwin Bean came came to life up, uh, probably two years ago now as a collaboration between many departments within the school district. Uh, so special education, uh, business, art, um, food service, for sure. Uh, and just really a great opportunity to to highlight things in the district that you um, really don't think much about. And so um, to take a look around, I don't know much the coffee drinker, but it's a full service coffee bar. Uh, the kids get a chance to to be in here uh, every day when school is in session. The artwork is just really fantastic. So if you look around, uh, you see the artwork on the walls uh, that was provided for by our students. Uh, so our national Art Honor Society students uh, had, had done all the artwork for the Baldwin Bean. And so um, the shout out really goes to a couple teachers that, that made this happen. Uh, Eric Jankowski uh, is our special education teacher here at the high school. Um, Marissa Gallagher, uh, the uh, director of, of student services. Um, and there was a collaboration between them, Sherry Foote through the arts, uh, the, business, uh, the business classes, um, the true purpose is for occupational training and employment training for our special needs students. And so uh, those uh, the kids get a chance to be in here every, every morning. Again, when school is school in session, they get a chance to uh, to serve, wait, wait on customers, to, to they, they get to be their own baristas, making sure that uh, all the drinks are taken care of. It really is a, a fantastic space. The funding support came from the district, Baldwin Whitehall Educational Foundation, and also the boroughs and township uh, police association. And so. Uh, it truly was a collaboration of, of, of pulling different uh, uh, groups and folks together uh, to do something greater that, than we've ever done before. Now, I often was teasing during, during the grand opening, I think back to my days at Baldwin High School in 19, uh, 1983 to 1986, and um, no offense to the folks back then, I was just happy that water fountains were working, and now we have coffee shops inside of, of a high school, and it's really something something special. So. Uh, the ball one being a great place, and uh, normally on a day like today, this place would be just brimming with with students uh, and just be a, a bunch of activity. Now, stools and, and benches are up on top of tables, and it's awful quiet. And so, um, not to be depressing, but uh, the great bigger times and, and greater times are coming in front of us. Um, a couple other positives and, and, and successes that I wanted to to focus on today. Um, we talked about the food service workers, and, and yes, they are they're getting ready for the day and, and doing great things. Also want to give a shout out to our, our heroes, the teachers. Um, and I've, I've heard some feedback, well, the teachers are just doing their job. Well, they are, but they're doing much more than just their job. I don't think anyone ever signed up to be an online digital platform teacher 100% of the time. We know that there are opportunities to, to move in that direction. but. To be a 100% online teacher, it takes a different level of preparation, a di different level of planning. And I think it's really important not to just simply think that all that uh, should be taken for granted. So uh, to the teachers, to the paraprofessionals who 
Uh, we know we have just some of the great highlights and the great stories that are out there. Thank you for what you do. Uh, thank you for doing your job and so much more. Uh, the next shout out, com Community Positives, lo looking at the connections between uh, the school district and our history. And so the 80th anniversary celebration, our shout outs, a little bit of a different spin. Uh, one of these folks is an alumni. The other two folks have served this district in this community for such a long, long time. And so uh, during the 80th anniversary, we, we were going to be honoring Representative Harry Reshaw, Representative William Quartz, and also State Senator Pam Iovino. Now, Senator Iovino is an alumni of Baldwin High School, uh, so she was going to be brought into the, the Distinguished Alumni Hall of Fame uh, for her work, not only now uh, as State Senator, but her, her, her career up to this point, just really has done wonderful things for the community and continues to serve in, in, in just greater ways now being a, a senator at the state level. Representative uh, Reedshaw and Representative Quartz have been friends of Baldwin Whitehall for a very, very long time. Uh, so they are advocates of public education. Uh, they care about the kids. They find ways to, to give back to the community, uh, not just from working from Harrisburg, which is critically important, but also here in the community, um, in the school. So Representative Reedshaw was a fixture of Friday night. I know that his grandson was, was a ball player, football player for us. Uh, so he was a fixture in the stands uh, for many, many years. Uh, he's a fixture in our communities, he's a fixture in our schools. I mean, anytime there's opportunity to, to, to have uh, open houses or, or sharing with administrators, teachers, um, he's here. And so he'll be retiring at the end of this term. He served 13 terms in the state house. Uh, really has, has been just a, a fantastic friend of the district and a fantastic friend to me. So, uh, Mr. Reedshaw, thank you. Uh, Mr. Quartz, he's retiring at the end of, of seven terms and uh, equally as important to us uh, and just such great work that he has done as well. Uh, his, his, his interest and his love is history. And so, Mr. Quartz, and government, and, and Mr. Quartz would be here every spring teaching civics classes uh, to our ninth grade students uh, he wouldn't miss a beat and so I, I could almost set my my watch by uh, the time of year and know that i would get a call from his office making sure that we had an opportunity to get him in front of the kids and uh it was it was fantastic so uh to our representatives and our senators and not to leave out uh, senator brewster and rep representative <coughs> and other representatives around around the region thank you for all of you do what you do in harrisburg there's probably not a, a more trying time for you um, in, in serving your local community and trying to balance the need for additional funds, uh, the need to control costs. Um, your job is not envious. And so thank you for all of you, what you do. And I think it's important that we do remember that. Uh, some news from Harrisburg today. Uh, the governor's plan again, just we, we talked about this last week, but just it's important to, to, to keep talking about the hope of reopening. And so the governor's plan for reopening the Commonwealth still uh, is, is out there and it's quite, being flushed out with a little bit more detail, but the red, yellow, green plan, uh, where as of right now, the state is, is red, meaning closed. Uh, the criteria moving to yellow is starting to be established, and we're starting to see little pieces of that. So even this Friday with some of the outdoor recreation uh, elements that are going to start opening up. Um, and so that's really great news uh, because as, as weather starts to get better and warmer, then, then being outdoors is really important um, as, as residents. And so um, we do know that Friday, uh, May 1st, the outdoor recreation activities, so um, we'll have the opportunity to safely enjoy outdoor recreation um, as, a, as, a, as a way to maintain positive physical and mental health, uh, keeping with the Commonwealth stay-at-home order, which is important, um, that uh, there will be restrictions um, on businesses related to those activities, but golf courses, marinas, uh, different types of guided fishing trips, privately owned campgrounds, they will be re reopening statewide um, and there will be specific criteria related to those. So um, on the road to reopening and so any piece of, of change in that order is, is very much um, welcome. A couple pieces of property tax legislation and again this continues to uh, be a hot topic in Harrisburg and as I said before and, and I'll restate it now, the district's not taking a position uh, for or against uh, any particular piece of legislation. I think what's really important is to make sure that we have all the pieces and parts together, that we see the big picture before we, we move down any one particular uh, pathway or, or avenue. We know that there's two house bills that have been uh, introduced and so the, the legislation uh, is not new. There, there, there have been a 
couple other attempts that have not been successful, but they keep coming back around. House Bill 1776, uh, which freezes property taxes at the 1920 level. Um, so that's got out. That's been uh, passed out of the the um, the, the, uh, the committee, and so um, that may see some, some the light of day. House Bill 2431. Um, freezes property taxes, but also allows districts to reopen the 1920 budget to make changes um, during the course of the year. As at this point, all budgets are due June 30th. We know that the picture is going to be very, very incomplete as of June 30th. Whether reopening is a good idea or bad, um, I don't think the situation is going to get any better, um, you know, whether that's going to be July, August, or into the fall. Uh, but again, we hope to get a fuller picture on all of, all of our revenue concerns. It's not just about property taxes, it's about um, earned income taxes, it's about collection rates even at the existing level of property taxes. I mean, it's also things like uh, um, uh, rental revenue. You know, we, we utilize our facilities a lot of different ways from cafeterias to auditoriums to gymnasiums and stadiums. And so we collect rental revenue on all of those things. And so we know that uh, aspect will be down as well because we're just simply closed. And so uh, we do have concern about, I do have concern, I shouldn't say we, I have concern about these pieces of legislation only because in isolation, they're very, it's very hard to determine uh, whether they're good or bad pieces. Schools, uh, just like Baldwin Whitehall, have, have moved forward with plans uh, for construction. Uh, we know that we have uh, some, some of our facilities are really aging and starting to fail. And so those things cost money. And so we are looking at ways to, for uh, curtailing costs, please know that we are definitely looking at, at those types of pieces. Um, and so until all the pieces come together through the budget process, I think it's important to withhold judgment. So um, a lot a lot more coming out of Harrisburg. District construction projects, uh, they are moving forward because ultimately we, we do uh, wish to continue to take advantage of the plan con window and the plan con is a, is a, a reimbursement for uh, construction through the state of Pennsylvania, or the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. It's it's somewhere in the ballpark of a, around 20% uh, for our school district. So with, with our painter project, um, it is uh, in the ballpark of 10 to $12 million. And so to not take advantage of that and to, to put things on hold, um, basically would, that would be money lost. And so uh, we do wish to move forward. So the construction projects that are starting uh, basically now are the ones that are happening at Harrison uh, in order to make space for the additional students coming from Painter and keeping the sixth graders at, at Harrison. So uh, it's minor in, in the scope of the entire replacement of the Painter building. It is, they are some minor projects uh, creating a couple additional classrooms, but uh, those things are starting and, and social distancing procedures will be in place uh, for all of those jobs. Uh, the equity grant update also coming out of Harrisburg. Uh, our, our grant application is still under review. I'll be con continue to work on that today. But it's, I think it's important to, to take a look at of the, five, of the a little over $5 million, um, who across the state was funded? And I think these numbers um, are, are, are a bit disappointing. And, and just to be honest, uh, six IUs were funded. Uh, there, there are 29 intermediate units across the state. Six of them were funded. And so that's almost 21% of the IUs received monies. 33 charter schools received money. And so, yes, they are public schools and they use public dollars, and even though the, all the commercials indicate that they're free, um, charter schools take monies from the public schools that are that they serve uh, or where they work with, uh, they take the children from. But 33 charter schools out of 165 across the, the Commonwealth were funded. That's at the rate of 20%. So 20% of charter schools were funded. There was one vocational technical school, like our Steel Center, uh, there was one out of across the state, there are 84 of those. So only 1.2% of vote tech schools were funded. Now, if you're thinking of, well, where are the school districts? Well, here's where we get to the school districts. They're at the bottom of the list. 56 school districts out of 500 were funded. So at the rate of about 1.12%, school districts were, were, were funded with this money compared to 20% of charter schools. And all of our actions uh, speak to, to motives and, and, and so forth. So um, you know, those numbers really do speak for themselves as to where our interest is. Uh, you know, charter schools are funded based upon a formula. And in my little quiz that I pushed out a couple weeks ago spoke to this. Uh, they get funded at a tuition level set by the school district. So whatever, whatever cost educated child 
within the Baldwin Whitehall School District, there's a tuition level that's set with that. Um, so the charter school gets exactly that amount of money, regardless of cost. And what we've seen in, in many space, in many areas is that charter schools, and especially cyber charter schools, they get that amount of money um, and their costs are actually much lower. And so um, it's disappointing. Uh, we'll continue to, to work through our, our equity grant process and uh, hopefully we can make some gains there. Hopefully we can add and be the 57th school district, uh, but those numbers are pretty, uh, pretty depressing. So a review of the planned instructional model. So we rolled out this week the four plus one model. Uh, so Monday through Thursday for the four days of planned instruction, Friday being a flex Friday with review, enrichment, those types of things. Um, the feedback's been mixed and, and I thank you for your honesty. Uh, folks have, have said that um, that kids and their, their children don't have enough to do and so they're, they're gonna miss out on that, that, that fifth day of planned instruction. Um, teachers have been, they've been communicating with teachers, parents have been communicating with teachers to try to get uh, some additional work on those Fridays. Uh, while other people have said that, that the balance is good because of their own situations uh, with computer and access and, and household situations um, or even work schedules. And so it's really hard to, um, to plan a model that, that meets everyone's needs. Uh, we have over 200, um, nearly 300 teaching, uh, you know, professional teachers in the district. Um, and each of them have some, you know, slightly different expectations, slightly different procedures in place, um, and as well as um, the rigor that they're putting in place. And, and, and not saying that, that one is more rigorous than the other, but it's just different uh, because everyone's still trying to figure this out. The, the gains that we've made in, in, in four weeks of instruction have been incredible, uh, but we're not where we need to be. And that kind of brings me up to the, my next point is we need to plan for today, but we also have to keep an eye on tomorrow. And so. The conversation is starting about what will tomorrow look like. And I don't mean tomorrow, April 29th. I mean tomorrow, meaning like next school year. Um, and so we know colleges and universities are starting the conversation around the spring, uh, the summer semester and the, the fall semester and whether campuses are going to reopen. Um, superintendents locally, and I really applaud um, our group, we, our Area 5 group, which is basically the Route 51 corridor we're starting these conversations. In fact, the, the first conversation will be today um, as far as what are we starting to do and what, what lessons can we learn from other places on you know, within the United States or across the globe that have uh, been out in front of this a little bit earlier than, than we have been. Uh, and so there's a great article and I'll, I'll put this in the notes on the agenda today. It's an NPR article. It's entitled Nine Ways Schools Will Look Different um, When and, and, and If they reopen and I know that's those are pretty that's a pretty strong title the article's fantastic but um, please know that we have to start looking at these things and schools while the children may not be the most vulnerable population uh, when the kids come back together and then head back home uh, to the households with potentially those vulnerable people uh, in the household it is a high risk and so we will continue to look um, at at those things to see to see what we can do. Uh, let me pull up the questions. Sorry, thirty five pages. It takes it's taking the um, the sheet a little while to load. I apologize for the delay. Well, while, while my sheet is loading, can take a gander at the wonderful artwork behind me. All right. I guess this is the hazard of going on location, right? Okay, question for April, uh, for April 28th. 
the baseball teams did have team pictures taken before all this. Is there a way to get those pictures that we paid for? Um, absolutely. If they were paid for and they were taken, um, we can get those for you. Uh, I, we can talk to uh, Prince Charming. Uh, Mr. Saris can, can look into that as well. Another baseball-related question. There were a lot of teams who had links posted about the athletic department for ordering spirit wear. Um, those items would be, would be delivered directly to our addresses, I believe. I still haven't received the order. Who can I call to? So, so in regard to that, that, that would be either the boosters or the coach. Uh, please reach out to, to those folks uh, from the, for the specific sports. And that would go with any other spring sports. Uh, the, senior the senior banners from the school, uh, they are going to be distributed soon. We are working this week. Actually, yesterday we started up uh, having teachers come back in, packing up lockers uh, and packing up classrooms. And, and so... Um, we are getting all of the student belongings out of classrooms, out of student desks, where where, where that applies, uh, and to get those things in a in a common uh, collected area. And so, hopefully, uh, within the next couple of weeks, we will have those things out uh, for you. I, while I'm thinking about that, or while that to topic's fresh, I know that uh, at the secondary level, we do have uh, an obstacle with locks on student lockers, and so. I believe Mr. Tomaszewski has put out or will be putting out a survey to all students asking for if the lock is on the locker, asking for combinations so that way we can open the lockers. Uh, we will not allow all the students in to open up their lockers. It just is not safe for us or safe for the students. And so if we do not have the combination or if we do not have the key, unfortunately, that, that lock will be um, a casualty of, of the coronavirus. And so uh, we will instruct custodians to start cutting locks off later this week. So um, we apologize for that, but there's really no safe way to get the students in uh, to open those things up. Uh, no, question two, considering that the coronavirus will probably still be an issue in the fall when students return uh, to the physical school for class, it's a good, is it a good idea to continue with the planned closure of Painter, um, adding even more students to the remaining schools, especially the high school? Um, and again, we talked a little bit about this in regard to the funding, uh, but I think that the, the social distancing that, that, that's going to be required potentially for the fall, um, I think that no matter what we do, uh, it's going to have a uh, remarkable impact on it. And, I, and I, I probably say that tongue in cheek with the word remarkable, but it's going to have significant impact on, on our operations. And so um, we will continue to gather more and more information, but um, the fact that we do have that construction window and the, the the state funding, it's just really it's tough because that that's a funding that you just can't replicate any other way. And so, you know, twenty about a fourth or a quarter, a fifth of our funding uh, could be covered by state reimbursement, and, and, to, and to, to leave that on the table, and, and, and the the disruption that's going to happen anyhow with painter or not painter is still going to be uh, significant. Uh, with regards to senior graduation, was any thought given to use uh, drive-in theater space, uh, amphitheater, South Park, closed South End 9, uh, theater parking lot? Um, it would be really nice to be done on a football field, but other ideas can also be considered. And you're right. I mean, when, we, when I've seen that uh, come up with other school districts where, where um, drive-in theaters do still exist, because there's not many around it, uh, there's not any in the South Hills, unless you consider some of the ones that are still closed and they're all overgrown with grass. Uh, but that as, as we get closer, as we continue to, to plan forward, um, those are some, some options. They're not very good ones uh, because kids are still sitting in cars. Um, and so it's, it's, we talk about this nearly every day. And so, uh, yes, those things have been, been discussed and will continue to be discussed. Question four, uh, someone had checked Scoward over the weekend, found that their daughter was marked absent for two days because she forgot to submit the attendance sheet. My daughter wondered if it could be marked as an assignment on Google. I'm going to have to refer that to the building principal, at the high, I'm assuming, in, at the high school. Yeah, BHS, I'm sorry, at the high school, because I just I just don't know the details of that um, and, and how those are being recorded. Question five. Uh, representatives from all sports boosters will be meeting on Wednesday. That's correct. There is a meeting tomorrow night. There should be additional information shared after that meeting, so yes, we, we will be discussing what the spring will look like, and then even with the impact on, on this summer. Uh, will the class of 2020 get to do their handprints? Uh, yes, they will. 
um, we will not we will not bring them in until we, we can do that safely. And the greatest challenge now, the question is, can they come in a few at a time? Uh, a few at a time still will have kids have been missing each other for six weeks. And so a few at a time, we still can't um, ensure social distancing because as soon as kids will be seeing each other, um, they're going to be excited to see each other and, and, and lots of emotion and I'm trying to keep kids separate. But we will do that and um, we'll find a time where, where, where kids can get in there successfully. And even if it's delayed, uh, when kids are back in town, <coughs> excuse me, we'll make we'll make plans to, to, to make sure that's taken care of. Uh, kindergarten screening, uh, there there um, there is a lot of information that's on our website so far. Um, I know that uh, Ms. Huffman and I talked about that earlier this week and the end of last week, and so please check our website, uh, the kindergarten registration information, um, and you can also contact um, the email address registration at bwschools.net. Here's a thank. Here's a thank you and a shout out to the to the staff at Painter for compiling their video. Uh, that was that was awesome. Thank you. I, I did get a chance to look at that. Uh, we still have books from an ELA teacher. Uh, can there be a Dropbox number to the library's place outside? Uh, there there will be, but we just we'd like to try to accomplish the the distribution and the collection at, in a similar and organized manner. And so uh, there will be an opportunity to bring things back as well as get the things that you want out of the buildings. Um, updates on this yard signs for seniors. Yes, um, I will be get, sharing that as, as my uh, my send off today. Um, handprints, again, we talked about that in a second. Um, should teachers be live at least once a week for their classes? Um, the answer is yes. I mean, we've asked teachers to do, to do synchronous instruction um, and the expectation is once per week. And so where that's a concern, I, I need you to reach out to principals because I don't have any other details here. Reach out to the principal and talk to the principal about it because uh, that is the expectation that um, it's a live, there, there's at least one synchronous opportunity uh, per week from that class. Is there a reason why we have to switch to do everything in Nearpod or Google Slides? Having my son click through different things for each subject gets confusing. I'm also, is there a way to have at least one of the two days where the teacher actually teaches the lesson and so kids can have a familiar face that kind of goes back to uh, what's what's to be live and so um, yes the the expectation is is that we are moving forward with one day of live instruction uh, and so uh, please were if that's not occurring then then let us know that and we can move forward with that Uh, information was sent out yesterday about scheduling classes for next year. However, the form that form that was or was provided to the students was not uh, sent out to the parents. Uh, when will we have access to the form? Mr. Tomaszewski and, and Mr. Ross can push that out and, and get an answer to that one, and, and, and I can have that answer next time. Uh, it was announced yesterday that the governor said in-person graduation will not happen anywhere. That's the beauty of our state right now because um, superintendents are not getting direct com conversation or communications from the Department of Education. So if that is it, I didn't see that, I didn't read that, and it wasn't uh, sent to us. Um, so if that was a conversation that was pushed out, um, I'll go back and look for that. But um, I didn't see that. And, and it, if, if that did come out, I apologize for not being informed, but it didn't come my way. Are there any discussions, plans that students in the district have their own Chromebooks from first grade on as other districts have implemented already? Yes, and that was part of what the, the um, equity grant was looking to cover. Um, but in the budget for next year, we need to look at how we can start to build that out even bigger. We, we did have about a thousand devices. Uh, we had many um, iPads that were also being used in the elementary. We felt that with the, some of the demands with 100% distance learning, the iPads were not a good alternative. And even those of you that had those, at home saw the same thing that that from getting uh, in and out of certain google windows was was challenging so uh, we do need to supplement our our supply of chromebooks and we're looking to do that in this year's budget cycle uh while there was not a form that came home is there a way to be able to purchase the class composite pictures for the students uh, yeah, i'm going to need to get more information in regard to that because i i don't know which uh, photographs were done a long time ago in the fall so I, I don't know what that one might be um, at this point okay i'm going to jump out of the questions document
again, consistent with uh, what we did on Thursday and trying to, to meet needs for kids. Hopefully the little ones are out of uh, out, of, out of bed by now. Um, I do have the, the live chat opened up, and so Dr. Paradin is at, at, at home monitoring the chat. So um, if there are questions, and especially at this point, since the adults had a chance to put questions on the, the document, and I had a chance to answer those, if any of the students have questions, um, please take take a look at the at the chat. Has have students put uh, put anything in there, even if it's a, a, a hello. I mean, remember, need, the comments need to be appropriate. As I'm looking at the chat, there are a lot of uh, messages that were deleted uh, because I do have uh, Mr. Dorico and Dr. Paradin uh, taking a look at at this. Um, so there's no there's no space or, or time or, or or anything necessary for. A nasty comment. So if, if that's what you want to put on there, um, go watch Alan or, or somebody else. And, and so uh, we can move forward without you then. All right, our book for today, it's called Not Norman, A Goldfish Story. So here we are in the coffee, in the, in the, in the, the Baldwin Bean, the coffee house. Um, kids get a chance to, to read and relax here. So why don't we do the same? So Not Norman, A Goldfish Story. When I got Norman, I didn't want to keep him. I wanted a different kind of pet, not Norman. I wanted a pet who could run and catch, or one that could climb trees and chase strings. A soft, furry pet to sleep on my bed at night, not Norman. All Norman does is swim around and around and around, and around and around and around. Sorry, some of these pictures don't seem to be coming out too clear with the brightness in this room. This is it, Norman. I decide. I'm trading you for a good pet. Norman doesn't move. Not even a fin twitches. How can I trade him like this? No one will want a sorry looking fish in a gunky bowl. When I drop Norman into his nice clean bowl, he starts dipping and, flip and, and flipping, flapping his fins around. He looks so goofy I have to laugh. Don't think that I'm just going to, just because you made me laugh, I'm going to keep you. I tell him, tomorrow you're out of here. Norman blows a stream of bubbles. The next day I take Norman to school. I take him to school with me. If I talk him up real good during show and tell, maybe someone will want him. On the way there, we see my friend Austin. Austin has a real cool dog and seven puppies. Want to swap one of your pups for Norman, I ask? Who's Norman? asks Austin. My goldfish, I say. By the time I rescue Norman, half of his water is gone. I'm sorry. I tell Norman when I get to, when we get to school. I'm really sorry. He just stares at me all googly eyed. Finally, it's my turn for show and tell. Just as I start to talk about goldfish, Emily shouts, "Jenny's gone. Who let my snake loose?" Doesn't anyone hear the story of how I got Norman? Does anyone even ask to hold his bowl? Nope. They're all jumping and screaming and chasing the snake. Not Norman. He's looking right at me. Thanks for listening, I tell him. That afternoon, we go to my music lesson. As soon as it's over, I'm taking Norman back to the pet store. I take out my tuba and I, be I begin to play. Boom, boom, ba, boom, boom, boo, ba, bam, boom. I glance over at Norman. He's swaying back and forth. Glug, 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 he mouths. Look, Norman's singing, I say. Pay attention, snaps the maestro, and try to play the proper notes. Maestro makes me stay for extra practice. And by the time my lesson is over, it's too late to go to the pet store. Don't think that just because you like my music, I'm going to keep you, I tell Norman, and he blogs. That night, I'm sound asleep when screech, screech. What's that noise? Scratch, screech, screech. Yikes, there's something at the window. Then out of the corner of my eye, I spot Norman. He isn't scared. He isn't swimming around in circles either. He glugs and gives a little wave. I'm not alone. Together, Norman and I slide open the curtains. It was just a broken tree branch. Thanks for watching out for me, Norman. On Saturday, I take Norman to the pet store. 
just like I said I would. I look at the cats and at the dogs and at the snakes and the birds. I look at the hamsters and the mice and the lizards, too. They all look like good pets, but they are not Norman. When I got Norman, I wasn't sure I wanted to keep him. But now, even if I could pick any pet in the whole world, I wouldn't trade him. Not Norman. So I think it's pretty cool to have a friend, especially in these times where we're all at home and sometimes it gets a little bit lonely. And so if a friend is a goldfish or a friend is a puppy dog, um, friends are awesome. So uh, let's check out the live chat and see if there's anything that came in here that is uh, productive. And so... Uh, some Jason from Jason uh, will graduation still be occurring that's our goal that is absolutely our goal and that's our commitment to the kids um, I have a child who will be turning 16 in June and would like to get a work permit how do we go about getting that since schools will be shut down I mean, for work permits and things please email Mr. Tomaszewski at the high school and the staff is here we are issuing those and so they can talk you through that process Danny Murphy hello thank you Danny hello to you too buddy Uh, from Stephanie, could we have a virtual graduation if we cannot do it live? We can. Um, it's just not a really great alternative, but we absolutely can. And we're starting to look at what, what things we can do. This past weekend, you know, the University of Pittsburgh uh, locally, they, they did theirs. Um, colleges are a little bit different situation because when the students went home, uh, they, they went home across the entire world. Um, our kids are local. And so um, we definitely want to try to do it live, uh, but that presents a lot of challenges as well. But hang tight. As things evolve, then uh, we'll hope for positivity and we'll, we'll, plan, we'll plan for the rest. And Stella, uh, Perth and my kids say thank you for the story. Well, kids, uh, you're welcome. I, I, I like reading the stories. And so uh, as we finish out today's message, a couple of po positive send-offs. We talked about senior signs. And so the senior signs are actually on their way to the houses now. And so I hope that, that um, the teachers, we had 90 plus district volunteers, teachers, faculty members who could not wait uh, to distribute those 380 signs. And so um, I hope they come up to your house. I hope they beep the horn. I hope they not they knock on the front door. Seniors, you better get out of bed. I want video. I want pictures. Um, I want to see what this looks like. Uh, we do have uh, media coverage today by uh, WTI, WTAE and the Post-Gazette. So uh, make sure you put on your best jammy pants when you come out of the front door this morning. Uh, but we did start this morning at 7 a.m. and start distributing those to the faculty members who were coming around uh, to your homes. Uh, a special shout out through that process to a couple people. Uh, Marsha Green, thank you for uh, making this a really a, an affordable, easy process for the district to cut your prices significantly. And uh, Marsha did inform me that any profit that she was making from this uh, will be donated to local food banks. And so, Marsha, a shout out to you. Uh, Diane Kennard, uh, who helped out on Friday to get all of the signs uh, along with Marsha organized, along with our kids, Lexi and Jenna, who, who really helped us uh, organize and, and get these things uh, in some fashion that, that can be easily distributed. So um, those are coming out to you now. I'm really excited about this. Uh, Marsha did a great job uh, where we had the photographs from for the kids. They were they're full color uh, with the picture and the name. So they are personalized. And so I think that, uh, once again, Baldwin steps up in, in really big ways to try to support our kids. Uh, and, a, and a positive send-off, uh, and I have a quote, and, it, and this came out of one of my phone calls yesterday, and uh, it's from Thomas Edison. And so the quote says goes like this. When you have exhausted all possibilities, remember this. You haven't. And so that's what we're going to continue to do. When we hit against walls or we hit against frustration uh, or just exhaustion, we need to keep thinking, we need to keep working, and we need to keep finding better solutions for what we're doing because um, ultimately uh, that's our commitment to you. So remember, please stay safe, uh, please be kind, and always remember uh, to wear your mask. Thank you.